Yeah, yeah, let's make it a huge no. bear roaring loudly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right back at the, in fact, it was at half term, we had an inset in dance at um, a neighboring primary school. And I quite liked the idea of incorporating dance into the classroom. And we just learned the basic structures according to the national curriculum, travel, turning, jumping. And it just so happened to coincide with my sort of aim of covering adverbs and verbs this half term and adjectives and, and nouns and all the rest. And I thought, oh, well, why not see if there's a link between something like movement and dance and grammar? I thought maybe that is my way in to turn it into something that children actually feel excited about, whereas at the same time they will maybe remember it a bit better than, than I did from my own schooling. After seven years as a secondary geography teacher, Aidan O'Kelly moved into primary teaching. He did not relish the idea of tackling grammar. The idea of teaching grammar uh, when I began teaching four terms ago. I wouldn't say it was terrifying, but it filled me with a sense of sort of uh, boredom, really. I have to be really frank and say that. And so to teach something like grammar, when you suddenly realized as an adult, oh, I don't really know if I remember much of this, um, it made me think, well, why didn't I remember very much of this? And it didn't, it wasn't something that I remembered feeling excited about or thrilled about when I was at school, grammar. And I really felt challenged last year in, in my first year of teaching at primary, thinking, how can I make grammar something very, very exciting? Partly for me, so that I want to teach it. And I thought, well, if I want to teach it, then the children, they will respond. I, I just knew that they would. Aidan's lesson plan covers four stages. Shared writing as a whole group, collaborative writing in pairs, the development of ideas in groups, and finally, performance and appreciation. So if we're trying to put together a sentence which is action-packed with adjectives and adverbs, and if you have difficulty trying to think of all those different <coughs> words, which one of these f words would you start with? George. Um, the noun. Yes, I think I'd start with the noun. You see, what I have found with something like grammar, that in just covering adjectives and adverbs and nouns and, and verbs, in fact, we have touched on imaginative story writing. Joyfully. Cheetah. Cheetah. Uh, running. running. So the cheetah is running. In terms of meeting the, gr the government criteria and making it rigorous, well, I feel with some children it has been necessary to go off on, could be called a more imaginative digression, but in fact it's not really a digression at all because it's brought them right back to where they should be. Aidan uses the word classes and their allocated colours to generate a provocative opening sentence. The opening line is going to be, when I visited the freakish school, this is what I saw. Right, this is what I saw at the freakish school. Joseph, could you give us a noun, please? Dinner lady. Dinner lady. Can someone tell us what the dinner lady was doing in the freakish school? Lilius. Cooking. If it's a freakish school, the adjective and the adverb kind of bring it to life and tell us something more. Uh, let's have uh, Alice. Could it be foul smelling, dear oh. lady? That's fairly hard hitting. So what I want you to do is tell us about your visit to the freakish school and you can be as wild and as outrageous as possible and bring all of the characters to life with your adjectives and your Adverbs. Chloe? Aidan strikes a balance between a structured approach and the freedom to experiment. Michaela? I find it easier to just do um, all in the same, in the <coughs> right order instead of noun, verb, um, adjectives. And oh, you mean in this order? 
Yeah. Oh, well, that's fine. Absolutely fine. If you start off with the, the same first letter, so for example, um, if the adjective, noun, and the adverb and adverb all have the same letter, what do you actually call that when they all start with the same letter? Because some of you have been doing this anyway. Shh. You have been doing it anyway without actually realising it. Misha. On a multiple. No. No, no, no. no, no. Michaela. Literation. Excellent. If you could quickly and quietly go to your away places, please. I think the collaborative approach to work I began to see last year in particular was increasingly important. I really like the idea of children um, just bouncing ideas backwards and forwards and discussing things. Then two colons. Um, one I visited butchers uh, I saw. I saw some smelly fish. Yeah, come on. No, Billy, take off the colons. I still have the sort of concern at the end of the day that they'll be over dependent one on the other, for example, or that their work will be identical. But actually, I should know better because it never is identical. They will always go off on tangents. They will always have their own ideas, but sharing at the same time. But what is really interesting is that when they're listening to each other, they can actually be very, very supportive. You know, not always, they're not perfect, but, but they can actually be if they're listening to each other read their work. I want you to hear what people on Blue Table have done, because again, Alice has decided not to stick with the freakish school, but has completely, and this is what I absolutely get so excited about, you have completely gone off on your own tangent and created something very interesting. Go ahead. The antique dressing table proudly held 30 fashionable perfumes, 70 frilly pink knickers, 100 odd pony socks, 170 Barbie pictures boxes, one, one large triangular mirror with looking stressful carved around the edge, 130 fake silver bracelets, 600 forged pounds and six, 600 sly socks swaying silently. Excellent. Very, very interesting indeed. It really strikes me when I hear people like Alice reading about her dressing table um, and the and this sort of quirkiness and the oddness of that. I'm thinking, oh my God, there is such a story there. So in a way, the grammar is, I thought would be a foundation, but in fact, it, it has already, I feel, given rise to some exciting stories. So you're going to have to come up as a group with a sentence, which you are then going to have to put together as a little dance, a performance. And, and then we're going to have one group after another passing by, like it's this wonderful, outrageous circus parade. But could we just have one quick example off the top of your head? Uh, what might you see passing by in a circus parade? And make it outrageous and wild and exciting, because remember, you are going to be acting it out. Uh, no, 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 no. Billy. Um, a cheetah. <laughs> cheetah. What is the cheetah doing, Billy? Um, walking slowly. Mm, okay, walking oops, slowly. And shh, don't you, uh, Jude, what kind of a cheetah is it? Extraordinary. Extraordinary cheetah. Now that's quite a challenging one to actually act out. Okay, what you're going to do in your groups, and we've already discussed what groups you're going to be in for this afternoon, so you're going to have to come up as a group with a sentence, which you are then going to have to put together as a little dance, a performance, and you'll have some time in the hall to practice that. Jumping towards pirouetting slowly. Have you checked your spelling? No. I didn't think so. Dictionary. Sorry. I'll give you a hint. P-I is what it starts with. So look up under P-I. Pirouetting. Pirouetting. Tiger echoing, swaying slowly. Five, four, three, two, one. One. Two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, and sway. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Slowly. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Keep going. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Excellent. Four. Posing penguins wobbling evilly. One, two, three, and one. I just feel at this stage we, we have the space and the opportunity to explore different ways of learning. Um, I just felt it was really important that we would approach topics in a whole variety of ways. So some of the time, yes, is the mundane, sitting down, doing your spelling test, writing things in your book, for example. But other times it's creating, it's visualising, and increasingly it's the kinesthetic approach acting out, performing. But if the children are having that variety of experiences, it makes it exciting. The circus parade came to town, and this is what I saw. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to a circus of madness. We're the jumping dwarves pirouetting slowly. Turn two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're flickering snakes smiling evilly. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Four loopy fleas gnawing ruthlessly. No, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We are dangerous rhinos. You charge it rapidly. Six, seven, eight, one, two, three. I am a mad monkey dancing madly. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm a Turkish lady dancing cheerfully. Five, six, seven, eight, two, two. And I guess at the end of the day, the aim is to make people really enthusiastic readers and writers. And I feel by enthusing children through drama or dance or whatever, then for me, I, I think that is the key, making them enthusiastic. So that they're coming to school or their literacy lesson thinking, oh, literacy, fantastic, I'm so excited. Which I think is such an essential part of, you know, reading and writing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and back. 